All right, we're back to PETG. I've got some things I really want to print with this because I want the durability and the heat, heat uh, uh, resistance. And everyone says it's better than, than ABS, although I can't print this with ABS. This printed ABS fine. This is the PLA. Of course, I did print these fine, these regular objects. But of course, the F14 uh, wing failed again. So I got time on that. And if you look at this one, it's hard to see, but we're just not getting. You can see it's cracking there. Of course, this one cracked off all the way. Uh, we're not getting any layer adhesion that I think is important, obviously. Uh, but again, this this printed fine, so it's a little bit confusing to me. But uh, I looked, searched around some more, and it seems like what people are saying is you need to have low fan speed. Remember, I had high fan speed to stop the stringing, so I'm not going to concentrate on stringing right now. I did increase the movement, the non-printing uh, movement speed, to help eliminate stringing, and, I, and then I, I didn't get stringing on this thing very much. Uh, but the other thing I want to change, I want to keep the bed, I'm going to keep the printer all closed up. So last time I had the door open, the top off, fan on 100% after the first couple layers. And with, like with ABS, you want to close everything up. So I'm reprinting at uh, 248, which is the maximum temperature of the printer. which should give us the most bed uh, layer adhesion, theoretically. And I'm going to increase the bed temperature from 40 to 50. Uh, it says 40, to, uh, 40 to 60 on the, uh, on the reel, the bed temperature, actually says 35 to 60. We were using 40 and that we had got good adhesion, but I'm thinking maybe the temperature of the bed can keep, uh, the temperature a little bit higher and get the, uh, and I'm putting the fan only at 50 after the first layer. So we're going to try that and see if we can solve this layer adhesion because I, I, I'm going to print some things that I need layer adhesion, obviously. So we're going to go with that and see what happens. All right, so we're on Simplify 3D. We're going to do our bed adhesion and uh, layer uh, layer adhesion test that I designed. So it's just got a thin wall and a thin base and some uh, embossed lettering on the base and some indent lettering on the wall. And like I said, we're going to go with the temperature, 50 degrees for the bed. So some sites have been saying like 80, 90 degrees, like you do for ABS, but uh, the reel doesn't say that. And I'm, I got good adhesion, so I don't want to go too high. And I'm going to go with the maximum temperature, 248. And for cooling, after the first couple layers, I'm only going to 50%. In fact, I'm going to do that to the first layer. I'll do the third layer. I like that better. I think it's two layers down. 50% cooling. And for speeds, we've got 2800 for the printing and 7200 for the movement. I got that on string. Now, this particular model shouldn't really have any stringing, uh, but uh, so we'll just go with that. All right, so we'll do this and go over to the uh, time lapse. And like I said, I've got the door closed and the uh, top of the printer uh, on. <laughs> Spatula is getting underneath it okay. It's got good adhesion. But it is coming out of it. Maybe I want to back off on the adhesion because I don't seem to really need it. It did come off clean at the bottom. Yeah, so. Alright, let's look at our layer integrity. Actually, it seems really good. And this printed fine on this side. If you look at what happened last time. 
You can see the surface is all, all bubbly. Not, I would say just as well as the ABS. Like maybe the lettering might be a little better. And the P -A PLA. Yeah, the slight British equivalent to the PLA even. Wow. Let's really zero in on this. The layer adhesion seems to be perfect now. All right, maybe we cracked it. So let's go back to our infamous uh, stringing test, stringing towers, and see how this setup works with that. I'm going to lower the bed adhesion temperature to 45. Uh, and uh, hopefully I'll make it easier to come off. So the, the Stringy towers did have bed uh, layer adhesion problems. The towers kept cracking off. So let's see if this will fix that. All right, here's the infamous uh, stringing towers test. Stringing posts, sorry. And like I said, we changed the temp bed temperature to 45 and we're still doing 248. So fortunately, this printer will do 248 because a lot of the PET uh, filaments call it up to 250. Some say 260. So. Uh, if we can print this at 248, that's fine, and uh, we're really happy because I have a lot of plans for PETG printing, so I hope I, I need to nail this and get it to work right. So, all right, we'll, we'll go for this, and uh, I think it only takes uh, it takes 27 minutes, okay? Because we are printing slower, so I think slower is also a good thing. I mean, that's not great for printing a lot of stuff, but I think you know, we, we we obviously want high quality and. Uh, parts that stick and the layers stick together so <clears throat> if we have to deal with a little slightly slower printing temp printing speeds that's fine as long as the result is the quality that we want so all right we'll go ahead and send this to the printer and we'll switch to the time lapse all right it's done so there is a string going from the last tower up to the print head which is no big deal Let's see if this comes off a little easier than the other one. I might go back just go back to 40. That yeah, came off okay. No residual. Alright, so as far as stringing goes, there's a little bit of stringing on the top posts. I don't see that fringing. And more importantly, more importantly, the towers are solid. They're not cracking off like the other ones. So I think we I think we lucked in on, you know, there was some consideration done as far as what to set it at, but I think we hit upon, let's call it that, hit upon the perfect conditions for printing PETG on this printer. So we're ready to go with it and start printing some stuff. All right, that's exciting. So this is, again, let's just go over the uh, uh, setting. So. We're printing a 248, which is the maximum for the printer, and at the upper range of what the reel says. We're using 45 degree bed temperature. We probably could go to 40. I might try that. This wasn't that hard to get off, and the bottom is clean, so maybe I'll stick with 45. I don't know. We printed with the top on, and the door closed. The door is closed. And, um,. And we set the uh, fan to 50%, the exhaust fans on the back, 50% starting at layer three. So the first couple layers go down, then we turn the fan on 50%. That draws air in from the sides, so these vents on the sides. And uh, it looks like we got a good, uh, good result. So on to real things to print. All right, we're ready to take on the ultimate challenge, printing the F14. So our last attempt, wing broke. This is the PLA version, worked fine. Except the this this engine didn't print properly. I'm not sure what happened that with that, but in any case. So we, we did I did lower the bed temperature to 40 to make it a little easier to get this thing off the bed, because that was where the wing broke last time. The main thing we're looking for is super good bed adhesion. And so we'll try that and we'll see if we got a winner. So here we are in Simplify 3D for the F14. And we've got our new temperature. So we've got 40 degrees for the bed and 248 for the extruder. And our speeds are the same as we did before. Everything's working great there. So for infill, we're using triangular infill. We 
which will mean it puts a layer of uh, infill at every, or it puts a triangle at every layer of infill. And we're also every 20 layers, we're putting a solid diaphragm to help improve the strength. And we'll take a look at how that works. Also, minimum infill length is only 0.4, so that's the size of the that's the size of the uh, extruder nozzle. So we want to, you know, wherever, wherever there's room for infill, we want it to go in there. And we'll see how that works in a second. So we prepare the print. It's going to take about a couple hours. And if we drill down to the layers, we can see how the infill comes in. So it's solid up here. There's there's the triangular infill. So it's going in there. And then you can see there's solid diaphragms every 20 layers. So. All right, so give this a try, and hopefully it'll be a winner. Then, then we'll go on to real things that we can print. So here we are in Simplify 3D for the F14. And we've got our new temperature. So we've got 40 degrees for the bed and 248 for the extruder. And our speeds are the same as we did before. Everything's working great there. So for infill, we're using triangular infill, which will mean it puts a layer of uh, infill at every, or it puts a triangle at every layer of infill. And we're also, every 20 layers, we're putting a solid diaphragm to help improve the strength. And we'll take a look at how that works. Also, minimum infill length is only 0.4. So that's the size of the, that's the size of the uh, extruder nozzle. So we want to, you know, wherever, wherever there's room for infill, we want it to go in there, and we'll see how that works in a second. So we prepare the print. It's going to take about a couple hours, and if we drill down to the layers, we can see how the infill comes in. So it's solid up here. There's there's the triangular infill. So it's going in there, and then you can see there's solid diaphragms every 20 layers. All right, so give this a try, and hopefully it'll be a winner. Then, then we'll go on to real things that we can print. This works and we're off to the races. So. I'm actually using this spatula. This is a little offset spatula. Usually I use this one because it's got a nice, uh, a nice tapered tip on it. This can get off almost anything. So this is my go-to spatula. But I'm trying to come from the side and maybe we won't have as much shot at uh, cracking the wings. But in any case, it was a string coming from the tip, which we expected, but everything else looks pretty good, solid. So. Let's see if we can get this. That doesn't want to go. Okay. All right, so we'll try this one. Try to get into this uh, tail. Yeah, the tail. Well, it looks like it came up okay. All right. So now we've got to articulate these wings without cracking them. They seem pretty solid, and they articulate. All right, they didn't crack. Woo! So here's this one. Uh, here's the one we did before, and this has got the cracked wing, you can see. This one, the wings are solid, so we're getting great layer adhesion. A little bit of a defect there, but that's okay. And then here's the uh, PLA version, so this is nice and good too, but this one is working. And in this case, the engine's printed perfectly, whereas in the PLA, something went wrong. This engine, the, the filament didn't adhere. There could have been some little, something I didn't clean off the bed or something, so I'm not really worried about that. All right, so here goes the F-14, Tomcat, and take off, Top Gun, into the danger zone. So that's it for testing a PLA or a PTG, and we're ready to go 
uh, to print real things. So that's exciting. All right, just to wrap up, for PTG on the Flash Forge Dreamer NX, I'm going to print with a lid on and a door closed, just like you do with ABS. So that makes sense. It's a high temperature filament like ABS. You don't need a super high bed temperature for adhesion because this, this uh, textured uh, bed covering is good adhesion at a lower temperature. And also, PETG won't shrink like uh, ABS will. So you don't need to worry about the bed temperature as much. And we're printing at the maximum temperature the printer will print at. Now this HQA filament was up to, set up to 250. 230 to 250. So we're printing at 248 and it seems to print fine. It didn't do have a lot of stringing and we're moving fast when we're not printing and we're slowing down when we are printing. So we're we're printing um, at 2800 uh, millimeters per minute and we're um, uh, moving at 7200. So that'll cut down on the stringing because we don't have time to drip. And as far as the fan goes, the case fans, uh, we leave them off for the first two layers. Those are on the back here. And then we turn them on 50%, and that'll draw some air in from these side vents. And that's how you can successfully print PTG with the Dreamer NX printer. So I'm super excited about that because I have a lot of plans for printing some fun products with uh, PTG. So keep an eye out for those on my Etsy store. Beta Signe signing out. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. Post a comment if you have any questions or ideas and I'll try to respond. That's all for now, but more videos are coming. And if you want to see them, please subscribe to my channel and turn on the notification icon if you don't want to miss one. This is Beta Signe signing out and keep looking up.